Okay, guys, finally getting after it. Um, you know, when I did my deck, 20 by 37, I want to say, this is kind of a big deck. I used about 10 of these uh, discs. These are Warrior flap discs, and this is 60 grit. This is aluminum oxide. And um, these are, right now, they're on clearance at Harbor Freight for 249 And I'm sure I got a bunch of these on sale for 199 And I just bought like 20 of them. And so, of different grits. So I have some 120, 60, and some, I think there are 40 or 36, can't quite remember. I did buy one of these just in case this wouldn't work out. So at least I have something else to go to. And this is a Bauer. This is kind of more intermediate priced. So this is not the best flap disc in the world, but not the worst. Um, 40 grit also, uh, type 27. We'll talk about that in a minute. But so this was six bucks. And I, you see, I didn't open it because I didn't use it. I ended up using these. And I don't feel bad about using these because I'd use them up and you know, really wail on them. And, uh, if they burned up, so what? It was two bucks. So this is the thing that everybody's been wondering about that I've been wondering about. I bought it and I kept thinking, I'm gonna have another project. I need to strip. I'll do a video on that, but I just haven't had a project. So I'm sorry, this is coming late for a lot of you guys, but I'm finally getting it done. So hopefully it'll help some people. Uh, we're just going to do a little test. I don't have a project, but I have a board that's painted on both sides. Now, six bucks, let's say you have to buy, I don't know, five or ten of those to do your project, but you buy one of these at 60 bucks, shipped from Amazon, okay? And uh, this is supposed to do up to a thousand square feet. So my deck was 37 times 20, so that's 600 something square feet, or close to 700. And uh, so, yeah. It would have done the job for the deck. So we'll be using the same grinder for both discs, okay? So there won't be any change in uh, RPM. There won't be any battery uh, drainage issues with a cordless one. So this is the Bauer. This is the 8 amp um, kind of trigger switch. But it's nice because it has a little button. You can keep the trigger on without having to hold it down all the time. And then just pop it off when you want to. This is obviously too big for this. So we're going to have to take the guard off here. All right, so when they're talking about type 27, all that means is... There is a raised area here that goes against the flange of your of your grinder. Okay, so see how this is not flat right here. It's got this raised part right here. Let's see. Let's tilt it like that. And so your grind. This actually sits uh, further down away from your grinder. And uh, just for example, this would be a Type 27. And see where this runs in relation. See how see how that bevels up there. See how this runs in relation to the guard. Okay. So that uh, is a type 27. Now, when we're talking about type 41, which is the other one, I always remember 41 because 41 starts with F and flat starts with F. So 41s are flat. They're perfectly flat. So this is actually, this says type 1 disc, and that's another designation that some of the companies use. I'm not sure what the difference is. If you're a welder, you probably understand this better than I do. But those are flat, okay? So now these... Are also from Harbor Freight. I picked these up. I haven't really used these, but this is type 1 slash 41. Okay, so these are all flat as well. And how those sit in your grinder is they're flat. Okay, so just like that. And you can see how much higher they stick up in the guard rather than this type 27. If you put that on there, it would stick further down in the guard. Okay, so that's just some uh, different designations that some of the manufacturers use to designate are your discs flat or or uh, tapered. What does it mean to you? Some grinders, uh, be careful because some grinders aren't made to run um, type 41s and some maybe aren't made to run type 27s either. So pay attention to the manufacturer. Uh, it is kind of a safety issue. You can see how close this one is to the top, um, but there's still clearance. It still won't hit anything, but do pay attention to that because you don't want to buy the wrong thing.
Okay, the flap disc was the clear winner in my first video. Um, you know, but I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there's a lot of rippling and a lot of uh, kind of gouging, which for my deck, I'm not too worried about. Now for the Stamma brush, obviously that's going to come off. This one actually has threads on it, so you're not going to need that. But I don't think it'll clear the guard here. It might run inside the guard. Uh, now it's binding up. Okay, so it does say be careful because if you do have screws sticking up or something, that's probably not going to be good for this. I guess that's one of the advantages of using one of these at just two or three bucks a piece or maybe five bucks. If you do hit screws and nails, that's what it's made for. These are these are made for steel and stainless steel, okay? So these will these will strip down the metal as well. Um, so just be careful of that. It says it doesn't say anything about which what to remove or what not to remove. Let's just put this on here like this with this off and see how it kind of runs down to about the same spot. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, five turns. Let's just put this back on and see what it runs down to here. All right. One, two, three, four, a little over four and a quarter. I'm happy with that. Okay, so it says to run this perfectly flat, to not tilt it or gouge anything. But just run it and set it down flat and just kind of go back and forth side to side maybe in kind of circular motions like that and let it do the work so that's what i'm going to try to do never used this before but let's see how it goes Okay, so pretty fast. You know, it looks flatter and feels flatter. You can definitely still see the gouges from the Dyma brush in it, um, but it's definitely flatter. A uh, little bit kind of hard to control. I mean, just even with this grinder, I had to kind of pull my elbows down instead of holding it like this, just to keep it from uh, trying to walk around so much. It would just kept trying to go side to side, but it cut really well. And I don't, doesn't really even look like there's any wear on those. So, and on both sides, you know, I left a little bit of gray, a little bit of paint. I didn't want to spend a lot of time trying to get it all off. I'm just trying to do a, basically a surface strip. And of course, if you're going to have to go back and do that, that's extra, that's extra time as well. But um, as far as time goes, they're pretty similar. But, you know, if you're, you know, as far as the gouging goes of the flap disc, that's a, uh, if you don't care about that, it's fine. You know, it's definitely the cheaper way to go. Um, but as far as the Dyma brush goes, that's, I mean, it's not perfectly, perfectly flat, but it didn't really gouge it at all. Now, you might have to go back and finish this with a finer grit somehow, maybe with a belt sander or something, just to get those uh, grooves out. Of course, if you're repainting it, it doesn't matter. If you're using a stain, you, you know, like a true stain, those gouges are going to definitely show up. Okay, so I did find on Diamond Brush's website, this is 50 grit diamond, okay? And this was, of course, a 60 grit, so it's pretty close comparison. So, yeah, the time came out almost the same. This was like four seconds faster. I spent four, sec four less seconds using this than I did this. But this has a definitely, definitely gives you a flatter result, and I do like that about it. Um, is this... Does this lose its potency as it wears down? Does it lose its ability to cut? Because, you know, these don't 
flex very much. I'm wondering if as the diamonds wear off here, if that edge wears off as well so that you can get to these upper diamonds here. Do you see what I'm saying? Sitting on a flat surface like that, it's kind of kind of makes you wonder because I thought they would flex, but they don't really flex. At least I can't push them. So does that lose its ability to cut? I mean, so does this, right? But this you just throw away and get another one. I mean, I'd use this and use this until it was like noticeably slower that I was cutting noticeably slower. It's still cutting, but it was cutting noticeably slower and then I'd change it out just because it wasn't worth my time anymore. So um, this is not a long-term test, unfortunately, or a big area test. And I wish I could do that. I just don't have a project right now to do that on. Um, but right now, you know, for 60 bucks, if you want the flat result and you need the flat result, this is definitely the clear winner. Um, if you're just looking for speed and you don't mind the wavy look, or you're planning on going back and finishing it either way, this is definitely faster. Um, as far as grit showing up goes, this leaves less scratches than this does. And maybe that mo kind of moderates later as these kind of wear down a little bit. Maybe it won't be quite, you know, won't, won't leave quite as deep a groove. Uh, but of course, the flat disc leaves wav waviness, so yeah, we beat that up with a dead horse. Okay guys, what we're going to check out here is to see if we can use the flat disc instead of at an angle like that, flat, okay? It's going to want to walk and pull around. It's probably going to be, a, you know, more take more energy to use, but I wonder if we can get a flatter result with just a flat disc, okay? This disc, this flat disc is pretty flat as you, I mean, from here to here, it's pretty flat when you look at it like that, okay? The other thing you have to consider is make sure that your uh, this stud sticking out here, this threaded stud, doesn't stick out past your flap disc. Now the Harbor Freight grinder that I have, the red one, the Bauer, uh, does stick past, so it sticks like way down here like this. So I can't really use it for this because it wouldn't work. So I have this Black & Decker, it's a six amp, so it's not real strong. The danger is you have to take the guard off to use it flat, okay? This will cut your finger badly if you hit your finger with that. So I'm using split leather gloves. It would be far better to have a grinder with a handle back here and a handle over here that you can keep your hands away from this. So this is your own risk. If you're doing this, this is obviously uh, more risky taking the guard off. But we're gonna try it out here just to see and uh, see if we can get a flatter result. Here we go. Hopefully this will come out like it does in real life. But here's the flap disc flat, okay? Here's the flap disc at an angle, you know, beveled with the guard on. And you can definitely see the ripples here. And, uh, you know, distressed, kind of weathered look. I like it. Um, probably not for everybody, though. This is definitely a flatter result. You know, it's definitely better. And it feels smoother and flatter. Is it as flat as the Diama brush, which is right here? Let's just see. It looks like the Diama brush is, you know, a bit flatter. But it definitely has bigger gouges too than the 60 grit, although the 60 grit does leave some gouges. Now, um, you can see the swirls here in the Diama brush. Maybe it's coming out in the camera. You can see it swirling here. You can also see it swirling here with the flat disc running flat. Now what I noticed was, just pretty quickly, 
if you stop at any point with the flap disc, it makes this circle, okay? It'll make a circle there, it'll make a circle there. I got a couple pretty good ones here. And so it's digging out around and making a circle, right? And so even if you're going like this and then coming back like this, that stop right there when you change directions, it'll leave a circle right there, okay? So when, when they say kind of go in a circular pattern back and forth like this, that'll keep those big circles from happening. Uh, those big gouge circles from happening is what I'm trying to say. So here's the Diama brush. I think it's a bit flatter. Here's the flat disc that's run flat, okay? Let's just look at it again. I'm trying to use the sun. Hopefully it'll kind of cast uh, a little bit of a shadow this direction so we can see. Let's compare that to the flap disc run at an angle, not flat. And you can definitely see the ripples. Okay. And then running the flap disc flat again, this is flap disc flat. You can definitely see these kind of little concentric circles more so than you can with the uh, Diama brush. Let's see if I can use a circular pattern like this and we can get rid of all those. Let's just try it. Okay, guys I think that's a lot better hopefully this is coming out in the camera but you know there's still some gr there's still some kind of scratching from the grit that's normal um, but up here this is where I was stopping and I was you know <clears throat> you can see the grooves there and there and there you can see the circles and there's a lot less of that deep grooving right here this is pretty flat I would be pretty happy with that result uh, so you know adjusting your technique Technique's gonna be an important part of this, whether you're using the diameter brush or the flap disc. This is gonna be, you know, this is gonna be a, kind of a learning curve. And if you're going to do it on a customer's place, definitely, you know, practice some. Okay, so here's what I was talking about with the grinder arbor, how far out they stick. Now, of course, we put the guard back on this one, but if we use the flap disc here, you can see that hits right there. That would never work running this flat with the guard off. This grinder, this arbor is definitely more recessed. And even if this flap disc wears, there's still some room there, okay? So, and that brings up another point. You know, if you're using this at an angle, this grinder at an angle like this, it cuts really quick. You can put a lot of force down on it, but it also wears it unevenly too, which is fine, which is how they're engineered. That's what they're supposed to do. But as the, as the grit gets worn out, the paper also breaks down and brings up fresh grit. So that's, I mean, that's just how a flap disc works, right? But you can also see in here, this isn't really worn out. Um, this is much more worn out around the outside. Okay, so using this in the flat position, you know, you'll be able to set it down and it may even use more of the disc, you know, from the inside to the outside more evenly. So it may even last longer because it may even cut longer and further. Again, your fingers are exposed because there's no guard. So this is something you're gonna do at your own risk if you choose to do this. Sometimes I'll use, I'll take the guard off. That's my own risk. That's my own uh, choice at times, but I'll run the guard anytime I can. So I'm using split leather gloves today. And of course, if you hit this with a split leather glove, it'll probably won't gouge your finger terribly, but it'll still cut through this pretty easily. Even heavy duty welding gloves might be a better choice. You know, these are really thick and really, of course, these are really hard from being heated so many times from me welding in it for so many years. Um, they're really hard right there. So, and they're a little cumbersome because you don't have a good feel, you don't have a good grip. Um, but if your hand did accidentally slide up there, uh, it's, you know, it's not gonna rip a hole in your glove. And that's another thing about, you know, everybody wants the 15,000 amp grinder. I'm exaggerating, of course, because nobody makes that, but they also want the biggest, most powerful, baddest grinder. But that thing is so powerful, it'll cut through anything, you know what I mean? And if you buy a grinder that's, you know, three or four amps, that'll still do the job. Um, but if it does hit you, it's not gonna cut a big hole in you. You know, there's some advantages to lower power grinders. So this one's a six amp. This one's an eight amp. 
this DeWalt, nine amps. So this thing isn't gonna stop if it hits a glove. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, and with an eight amp grinder, you know, on the test we did with the diameter brush versus the flap disc, this is a 30 inch board. So we did 30 inches basically in one minute. This board is a true six inch board. So if you have a five and a half inch or a six inch wide deck board, you should be able to cut about 30 inches in about a minute with a diameter brush or with a flap disc. Okay, so you can kind of calculate where your estimate's gonna be as far as how much time it's gonna take you. So I think if I was going for the flat look, I might choose this. I might try this though, just to see how it works out. Also, if I, if I don't care and I don't mind the rippled look, then I'm definitely gonna use the flap disc just because it's cheaper. And if I hit a nail or screw, it's not gonna be a big deal. Okay, you know, so guys, you, a lot of you have a lot more experience with this kind of stuff than I do. Um, I'm kind of excited about the diamond brush. I kind of wish I had a project to use this on, but I don't. So please leave me your comments down below of the projects that you're doing and what you like best, if you've tried uh, one or the other and what you prefer, or maybe even have something else you like even better than this kind of stuff that works even better for you. Please let us know in the comments. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.